Welcome back, SOLIDWORKS 2025. In this video, we are going to cover revolution and other topics about uh, good practices. Okay, so let's get started with the fact that, well, we already have this uh, model from the video number four, and we are having the chamfer and fillets at the end of the model. So this is a good practice. So we're going to move this blue line so we can suppress temporarily these features and leave them there for um, come back after our changes. So we are going to make a sketch at the top plane. We are going to click at section view. I think this is the first time that I show this option. So section view is going to create a visual section while uh, we have it on, but the part in reality is entire part. We're not cutting the part, let's say the part is staying as it is, but this is just visual. So I will hit the space bar, get my orthogonal view, and I will start the sketching. So one of the things on revolutions is that we used to have a line that is the center line of the geometry. In this case, I'm going to uh, create a center line that is a special type of line. You will find out in a second why it is very special. It not only is being shown as, um, <clears throat> sorry, section line, but it is also intelligent in some of um, its functions. For example, one of the functions is to be a reference line and that means that it is not going to be taken in count for um, detecting um, a closed area. So it can be used as a reference line for other dimensions or for other constructions. The other uh, characteristic thing of this line is that when you create dimensions, depending on where you place the dimension, it identifies the geometry or the dimension as a diameter. So for example, here is staying at the left, it is just giving me the dimension in between the line and the point. But if I move to the right, I obtain a diametrical um, diamet di 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 diameter dimension. So I will add some dimensions in this um, in this model. Remember the recommendation that I gave in the previous uh, videos of having always uh, your parts, uh, your sketches, sorry, fully defined. So this is, this is something that is a good practice and uh, it is going to save you a lot of uh, troubles in the future. Only one second. Oh, yeah. SolidWorks is trying to make an, again another diameter, di diameter thing. I need to hit escape. So, because it expects us to keep doing diameters after creating the first one. So that was all. Okay, so I will provide here a couple of extra dimensions. So this thing can be all in color, in black color. Okay, so this is to be, this can be a, um, a geometry for a bearing. Um, that with extrusions will take up to three uh, operations, right? So let's say this is three millimeters. And of course we need the diameter of um, the retainer that in this case is going to be 63 millimeters diameter. Okay, now we have our geometry. We are fully defined here at the bottom. You can see fully defined and also your sketches all in black color. Now we can exit from the sketch environment. And now we have two options. Go to features tab and click on revolve cut or you can also 
um, instead of going to the top of your screen, you can just hit the S key on your keyboard. And from this drop down, you can select the revolve cut operation. Okay. So it already recognized a closed area and one uh, reference line. With that combination, SolidWorks is going to make the selection by itself without us having to say, okay, this is the axis and this is the area or the geometry that I want to uh, revolve. In this case, the default is to have uh, the 360 degrees. So I will just check here on the uh, green check here at the left. So as you can see, we have the revolution. So I forgot to add an extra geometry in here. So I will just come back to edit my sketch. So I can show you guys how um, how how to interact with the software if we add geometry. So there is the option of add the lines one by one and then do a trim, or we can add just a rectangle in here. I think the, the important dimension will be uh, the depth and the, the diameter of this section. So let's say it is going to be 52. So at this point, this is, totally uh, not precise dimensions for a specific type of, of uh, bearing. Let me hit escape. Okay. Let's see here, let's say, yeah, we're going to have a four millimeter um, depth in this uh, section. Okay. All right. So, and now I'm going to exit the sketch again, and I have a, an error message. SOLIDWORKS find out that there are more areas than it used to be. So the software cannot take the decision for you. So it prefers to just give you an, um, an error. You can click here, exit the sketch and rebuild anyway. And yeah, we will say continue, ignore error. That's not a problem. So now what we need to do is to um, edit again the feature. As you can see, it has a, a, um, a red indicator. So I will hit on edit. And now I can go and select the two areas that I want to, to use. Okay, now it's, it's looking better. Perfect. And uh, well, now it's time to come back to the full mode, let's say no section view. So I will just click in here and then the section view is, is gone. And now I will drop down the blue line, the end of part, let's say, and it is going to give us back again, uh, the rest of the fillets and chamfers. And now that we are in here, we can go and detail these, the ones that goes inside this uh, revolution feature, for example. So that's that's part of the workflow that I suggest as a, a good practice, for example. So let's say this one is going to have at the bottom one millimeter radius and, and well, and so on. You can continue uh, adding these features and these features are going to, in my recommendation, be suppressed with the end of part line or this blue line, and then do the modifications to the most primitive geometry, add the sketches and extrusions, etc., and then move back the end of part line. Okay, this is for keep consistency. And in, in this one, I will show you something important. Uh, if you're using SOLIDWORKS, in another language or your computer is set, for example, my one is set to Spanish. I start to have all my features by default in Spanish. I don't want that. So I will go to, sorry. I will go to uh, this uh, options option, uh, the options thing in here at the top. 
And I will go and use, uh, well, check this. It says use English language features uh, and file names. So as you have noticed, the new revolution, Cut Revolve 2 and the new fillet are in English and the rest are in Spanish because once the feature has been done, it keeps the name. So in my case, if I want to share this with a client, I want to, to use only English. Of course, I will have to rename them, right? So, and and then after the renaming, that's, that's, that's going to be fine. But how about this? Another good practice is to rename the features, but uh, rename them with something descriptive. So let's say this is going to be the main body Uh, let's say that this one is going to be the lateral pocket and so on. So you can keep easy, uh, easy on finding the features. It is not hard to find features in SOLIDWORKS, but it is a good practice at the end uh, for descriptive uh, purposes. You can always pick the face and SOLIDWORKS is going to highlight um, uh, the feature anyway, and in the next fe in, the, in the next videos we are going to cover other uh, methods how to identify uh, features that uh, are going to be very exciting. So here is a video uh, that maybe you will like to see about uh, breadcrumbs.